long showers. But... For years now, we've been seasonally nomadic. And for the past few years, we've been filming a lot for a documentary on homelessness. But we understand that itinerancy and life on the road can feel very different when one has the safety of a credit card. I've wasted $2,000 in wheels. No one, I don't know anyone else that, that has lived in a bicycle camper like this and has experienced so many wheel fails. I'm interested in one of the things that I know- Two of the people we keep bumping into who have spent years thinking about these issues are Aaron Fletcher and Paul Elkins. There it is. We first met Aaron Fletcher in Ashland, Oregon, a small pasture by the side of the road where he parked his sheep to graze for the evening. It's beautiful out here. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you finally. You. We'd already been emailing for two years when we finally met in person. I've been trying to get some document, somebody else to document it besides my little YouTube channel for uh, three years now. Like, I've been a homeless by choice for like 12 years now. This roofing has lasted a year and a half, opening it thousands and thousands of times. Yeah, they call it chloroplast. We have a friend, Paul Elkins, who makes a lot of stuff. Out yeah, there. I really appreciate him. You and him are the people with the, the most reach that have helped me. It's not just helping me. It's all this information needs to get out there. Like yeah, really... let's make a popular video. So that's a way, yeah. right? You got water? This is bad. Oh, you got a lamb. Aaron's video did go viral. And soon his YouTube channel would push past those 1,000 subscribers. And I literally have to move along. I just have to throw out prototypes. These days, Aaron's being recognized by more media than just Paul and I. Hi, Daniel. Hi. You guys don't mind if I film you filming, That's do you? Fine. Okay, right. because yeah. this is a weird full circle thing because I found out about Aaron from your channel. Yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, we've got to do this story, so. And you're doing it for Business Insider? I am, yeah. yeah. okay. And you're staying out here for a few days? Yeah, I'll be out here till Thursday. Okay. This looks pretty nice back in here now. It's just like... It's a little, very, a little cave when right? it's... Yeah. Our videos also started a design conversation between Paul and Aaron. Paul commented on one of the videos that Aaron had complained about his nomad bicycle camper a while back. So he reached out and apologized. He's indeed the master at living free, Paul wrote. Unlike most of us, including me, he walks the talk. I'm gonna go uh, visit Aaron Fletcher, I think. Chat about the idea of nomad living micro mini style. Okay, things that I would like to improve with this thing. Shortly after our last video, yeah, Paul and Aaron finally met and swapped <laughs> ideas. Thank you, the things that I would like to um, improve uh, with my design, I would make the, the whole wagon from from upright to upright, instead of six feet long, I would make it eight feet long so that I could have uh, four of these 24 inch by 24 inch bedboards. The middle bedboard right here is the, is the table so that I had four of them so that you could have two benches and a table, but that you could cook at the same time. Right now, when I have my stove underneath this guest's chair, I have to lift up my legs, I have to lift this up and I have to feed the fire. I'm just like, wow, there's so much exploration to be done with these tiny campers. You're, how tall are you? Um, five, ten and a half. You're taller than me, so you gotta imagine it being a little bit taller for your perfect fit. Oh my God. Is it comfy? It's very comfy. Paul doesn't live in one of his designs <laughs> like Aaron. But he's spent years developing plans for ultra light, ultra cheap shelters. So this was made out of two pallets, 48 by 40 inch pallets. This is made of four sheets of four millimeter chloroplast. Again, recycled campaign signs. You wouldn't know it. What's the weight on this one? 60 pounds. 60 pounds. Yeah. Soon after our last video with Aaron, we decided to visit Paul at his new island home north of Seattle. That's Mount Baker. Okay. We live just right over there, right well, across the water. That's where we filmed you last, right? Yeah. 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 yeah you I brought was, all your stuff. I brought all my stuff. Oh my gosh. I'm uh, seeing it now. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's laid out for you. It's laid out for oh you. Oh my God. So funny. I've mellowed out a bit, but yeah. I, still, I still make things. It's, it's more for the homeless, remedies for the homeless, something better than a tent, something more solid. 
the, the idea of solid walls and shelves and a counter inside. This was a, a little different color. I painted it and I shortened it about 19 inches. Coming together. You may ask why? Well, it's because I realized I sleep that way. I sleep curled up, so I don't need a full six feet. So on this version, I move the wheels forward so it doesn't pitch forward like it used to. And I always wanted a shorter version because I thought it looks cuter and it's more mobile. Yeah, so I lost quite a few features shortening it, of course. But um, I have about the same storage. So you really can sleep in there even with like that length? You really sleep? Yeah, I, I sleep from here. It's kind of like that. That's how I sleep. And that's so that's all you're you're just getting more and more minimal. Like yes. just what you need. You thought, okay, I don't need the extra length. I don't need it's the, the ultimate and minimal. Yes, ultimate and minimal. It's more intimate, yes. A little more claustrophobic, but I don't get claustrophobic, so and it's easier to pull. Sure. It is. It's light it lost a few pounds for yeah. sure. So yeah, I went ahead and added some storage uh, above the wheel well instead of having a shelf here like the old version. Use these same guys here. A little more storage here. This is a whole storage wall. Add a pair of Levi's. Create a little storage areas. These guys here. Carry all kinds of miscellaneous things. Top there. Here's your uh, oxygen smoke sensor. Just a small shelf. You can see with my hand how big it is. Not huge. Here you've got enough space for some socks. I have cycled these. This is from the old camper. Out of this big window. This lets a lot of daylight in. So when you're laying down, you get the skylight effect. It's a lot of light that comes in. You definitely wouldn't want to go more minimal than this. And I moved the stove out. I kind of decided that might not be a grand idea. I played with a few stove ideas. I had a couple flare-ups. Not that it caught anything on fire, but it just kind of made me question the idea of a small DIY stove inside the camper. So the other shelter I built here, the Calistoga, yeah, I really enjoyed making this. This is how this works. I just wanted the old wood look, right? Come here. And it kind of creates a table too, so you can do stand up eating, food preparation, whatever. Laptop, computer. And it gives you a little sunshade. Look at those sidings. Yeah. It's just kind of like a canvas tent. This is actually a quilt that's on the interior part here. I see. I wanted to create a bicycle camper that was just simple and freeform. I made a little test shelter using branches and canvas. The base frame was made very similar to my Nomad bicycle camper, but instead I used paneling for the floor. I got the bamboo from my neighbor across the street and had a lot of fun making the interior framework. While it was green, it took on the shape. Yeah. Unfortunately, you will see that all of this is kind of deteriorated and molded and dried up. So I learned something. Maybe there's a proper way to dry bamboo out before you use it. But this is what happened. I wanted it to be aerodynamic in the front so when you're traveling you don't have to fight the wind. That is the thing. You really want a pretty teardrop front end on a bike camper. It's like a giant potato to me. It's like a pioneer caravan meets, uh, you know, some sort of futuristic almost. Is it supposed to be a Conestoga wagon? Yes. It is. Okay. Yes, I mean, I named it the Conestoga Bike Camper. So it's breathable because you have a garment tarp. I mean, it's breathable, so it's probably going to feel very natural or... That was the idea. Of, it's just kind of like a canvas tent. Yeah. You might throw a scotch guard on there. But yeah, I wanted it to be semi-breathable. And it lets a little light in here too. That was kind of a nice part about it also. The heater. Well, it's kind of fun. Uh, I went to the glass shop and had them cut me up some two inch by three inch rectangles of fire retardant glass. Cut an opening into the uh, 
propane tank, welded that into there. Drilled a hole on the side to use for my lighter. And then to close the hole, little magnet fits right over the hole. Closes that up. So I try to create a system where it's not taking any oxygen from the inside of this structure. And also venting out the fumes from the chimney outside. And that's just a two inch drain pipe. So these two are Burning Man shelters. It's probably cool in here. Yeah, so we would shove five people in here. You can come on in, there's some chairs. So yeah, this was made specifically to stay cool during the hottest times at Burning Man. And it worked. We at one time had about five people in here hanging out during a windstorm. Well, this is the whole idea behind the thick uh, insulation. It reflects the sunlight, right? And what are these? This is... This is one and a half inch thick foam yeah. board. It's just insulation board, that's all. And then I'm using three inch Gorilla Tape to tape the edges, right? Okay. By having this on the ground, the sun can't heat the ground up. So it kind of keeps you about 10 degrees, 15 degrees cooler than the outside. Yeah. I had these holes that had little solar lights, $2 lights, so at night they light up. And then I have a wooden platform up there. You can actually sit up there with the chair. It's that strong. And, nice. it's, yeah. and it folds up into a 4 by 8 thing. Just boom, 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 boom. That's the whole reason behind the design. So these seams are foldable. Right, right. just like an accordion. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I made the foam one first, and then afterward I thought, could this be made out of coroplast? So yeah, that's that one there. So it started with this one, and then... No, it started with the TP, which doesn't exist anymore. I remember that one. Yeah, the 12-foot uh, TP. Yeah. This was an experimental of just, hey, what can I do with one, two, three sheets? It's kind of a sheet count. A little less money, but in here I'd figure you could get two people that can be in comfortably. So it's kind of like a, a tent? It's like a tent, okay. yeah. Okay. And you know, two people can hang out here and have their goods on the side. Yeah. Very small, but uh, very sturdy. Again, you can put a chair up here and sit on the darn thing, it's that strong, if it's taped wow. up well. And you're doing these because instead of a tent, as a way of insulating. Yeah, it's, right? it, these do help out in keeping the uh, interior of this about 10 or so degrees uh, cooler. It gets, you know, up to the upper 90s. It's desert. That's, yeah, it's yeah. desert. Oh, I love it. So the that's the tape you use? Yeah, this is it. That's your seam. Wow. Gorilla. It's good stuff. <laughs> oh man, it's is good it? stuff. Yeah. yeah. So funny. It's so interesting. You're using these same materials and just continue to, to sort of iterate. Yeah, it's just playing, playing on paper, playing with models, and what about this one? What about that one? Hmm, you know? So uh -huh. this was my favorite as far as material. It's four sheets. Each sheet's cut diagonally, and it's like literally no waste. And the waste yeah. that I have makes the door. So there's literally no waste on that. That's the scraps that came off of the bottoms. This is my favorite. If you go inside, you'll see it's got a little space to it. And I had... A single bed, one of these white wicker chairs in there, and a counter with a stove and a sink. It was perfect. I had a little bathtub that you could pull out from under the chair. All kinds of storage. This is and this is about eight sheets. The four by eight sheets at least right now, this is eight foot from here to here. This is a little different than the teepee in that because it's domed, you get a lot more headspace to walk around in. Whereas in the TP, you're really, you can only stand yeah. in one spot. Voila. Running water. Cool, huh? They've got villages for homeless that they're making these little sheds. Good stuff. Just enough for a bed, some shelves. It's like a shed, but they cost a lot of money. So I'm thinking of alternatives. I'm imagining somebody could make the panels out of a composite, for example, maybe fiberglass. So they just bolt together in a hurry and they stack up right when not in use. And you could still keep it affordable. Yes, I think you could. 
Welcome to my man cave. <laughs> so what is this here? Uh, this is my latest contraption. It's something, I don't know if you remember this. This is kind of uh, what I've been wanting to build for like 40 years, right? And I did one version that was made with a Honda 350 motorcycle that was given to me. It wasn't Ooh. quite what I wanted. Try it again. This will just be my vehicle, so I'm pretty much just building it like a race car. Just last year, I decided I wanted to do it. I finally built it. I am anxious to get the motor in here and give it a real whirl. I'm hitting a big bump here. Look at that. Sway with my short wheelbase. You know, I'm going to make sure that there's no twitchies going down the freeway. gets about 87 miles per gallon and that was the idea is to to see the minimalist size of a vehicle to transport somebody back and forth to work still carry your lunch and whatever or groceries if you want i can even go on a little test drive it's kind of fun There's a little trunk back here the core the body is made of chloroplast this temporary gas tank just to do my test but you can throw stuff back here when you're talking about doing a vehicle that's going to try to achieve high miles, it's a compromise between a motorcycle and a car. You don't have a lot of protection. I've got these for crash bars, roll protections. There's a little protection there, not much. If you flip, you know, you'll probably survive no problem. But if you get hit, you're light, you'll probably be the loser. It's kind of an island hopper. Yeah, um, just around here and the maximum speed limit is like 50 miles an hour. I've got it up to 63 and that was good enough. <laughs> like I say, it's got a little motor in it, a little um, Yamaha 185. That's a 40 year old motor. And I chose this motor, or I should say motorcycle. It's the same one that was used for a mileage competition back in 1984. A motorcycle that got about 380 miles per gallon used that particular motorcycle. And I just happened to find it with 1200 miles on it about 10 years ago and it's been sitting and waiting for me to so do a, something wow. so yeah. this project is like a long time in the oh making, totally very basic it's not polished This is just mild steel. It's a very inexpensive prototype. I think I only have maybe 4,000 into the whole thing, including the cost of the bike. This is something that they're not doing now. They're not making vehicles teardrop like they should be. This is what really saves gas miles is they say about 80% of your energy at about 18 miles an hour is fighting the wind, something like that. So you see a semi or a bus with a flat nose, they're pushing a lot of wind and they're paying a lot of gas just to go forward. That's a nice brake actually. Those brakes are nice, these brakes. But I have the two front brakes work on a pedal up here. And then this is the rear brake here. So yeah, this is steering. Ah, so that's the turn, huh? Yeah, and then the suspension is really simple. Yeah. And so you can go, on this you can, it really takes the uh, sideways lean when you go into a turn. Yeah. yeah. But it's not a dependent suspension, so if you hit one bump, the whole car kind of clunks to one side. What I'd like to do is lengthen it probably six, four inches, and that'll give me yeah. a little more stability at higher speeds. Do you have some buddies there? With, um... right. How realistic do you think that this could be something that people would use? Or at some level, at some iteration of this? Very. Obviously, it'd uh, be better if it had like a fiberglass body. I wanted to use the fluted plastic because I've used it so much and I know what it can take. 
because it's art, it takes on, you would think it's going to fall apart, but it doesn't. It stays strong. It doesn't flex at all. So I wanted to be able to use straight flat panels to be able to come up with this teardrop of a shape as I could. And that's why you see the shape the way it is. So the idea for this is that if you were to make this into something more scalable, you would go to fiberglass. Oh yeah, you yeah. totally change the whole thing, but keep the teardrop shape. This is just a real rough rendition of what could truly be something that you might see in a showroom someday. I would like to think so. So a lot of my ideas start off with folding paper. I just kind of figured, well, that's about the length. That should be the water line, judging from doing the math. So it's pretty simple. And there you have your pontoon, just like that. Tape that up. So it's so actually a catamaran. And it sat for about four years before I decided to try it out. I felt, at least for my weight, it rode too low in the water. But for a lighter person, it would work. So you had two of those, and then... Two of these, a little metal frame using electrical conduit, a little Tommy Bahama chair, and that little black motor there. It's a little 1.2 horsepower game fisher. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it'd get me going. You just collect motors? I don't. Each was specifically for a particular boat that I had. That one, I think, was originally meant for this guy. Remember this one? And then I got the bigger motor, the uh, Tanaka 300, and started adding that to the one behind you, oh. Coro Speedboat. I built a speedboat similar design. Didn't have a deck or anything on it, which is gone now, but this is the second iteration. And again, it's pretty light. I put a wooden transom on it on the back. Yeah, that way I could extend it another seven inches or nine inches to give me a little more buoyancy which would then be able to hold the motor. That's about 15 pounds more, but it's a three horsepower. Yeah, I bought this motor here. I thought, well, let's go electric. So it is now electric. It doesn't go very fast, maybe three or four knots. You definitely have that quiet ride. A lot less to break down. This is the boat that I, I just put it together this afternoon, timed myself, 13 minutes. So it takes a little while to do the little zip ties, but now you've got something that can go in the water and you can paddle around in quite safely. My first one was the yellow one. Do you remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah definitely. Getting in and out of it was what I was having a problem with. It was yeah. collapsing. This is fortified more with bulkheads and a wood frame. So there's extra little material in here like plywood and some one by twos, but I wanted to build a boat that you can take a sheet from, let's say, Home Depot. I just bought a sheet for $24 and build a boat. So the plywood is helping to weight it? Yes, when you put weight on this wooden member under here, it's pushing down here, which is pushing down there, which is pushing down there, and it's keeping the sides from collapsing. So how are you doing the math on this? Like just in your head kind of thinking, well, I mean... Uh, uh, no, uh, I started off sitting down. I sit on a board, right? I get in the position I want. I sit on a board and I put something to balance myself. Then I find the center point and that's where the center of the boat goes. Yeah, you just put your knees up against the side and it gives you balance. I'm the only one out here. Hard to believe. This is my first boat, of course. This is one by 12 pine boards on the sides. 
with quarter inch plywood top and bottom marine plywood one sheet just cut down the center and fashioned yeah i made that 20 years ago before this i was playing around with inner tubes didn't work too well and then i got a book on you know how to make these little kayak sort of boats and i just borrowed information from that and made my different version of that. I just want to get on the water, just a project. There's my dad on his sailboat. So we did have a little 32 foot sailboat that we'd go out on as kids. And so yeah, we even built a, a cabin cruiser. This one here is a long bike, one I played with. I've been picking up bikes from the junkyard and putting them together and giving them to homeless people. So that's why it's minus a few parts. So this guy here, I took the Nomad Camper and I shortened it. And then I wanted to build a vehicle that was motorized that I could tow it with. I don't know if you remember, I had the Hardley Davidson. <laughs> and this is pretty much stolen from that, but I also used Pavo, the yellow trike that I had, pieces from that. Like some yeah. sort of, you know, invention, but also looks kind of like... Yeah. yeah. The idea is to go stealth. So if a person wanted to travel around the country with this, you know, they can maybe hide in a park and not be seen. And nobody will give them any troubles. So yeah, you can, you can pedal the thing. It's probably not easy to go. There you go. Yeah, it's a six speed on the motor. It's almost like out of a novel by Carmen McCarthy or something, the road, you know, it's yes. like the bike they should have used. Yes. <laughs> it's funny you mention that. That's what the, the Bug Out Bicycle Camper was all about, that book. Oftentimes I'll play with models, but this is more for a backpack. I never made this particular one, but I did make one behind you there. Yeah, this is kind of fun. Conforms to your back, the way it's arced here. So I kind of just figured out how to bend it just right to get all these different shapes. Then, you know, got your different compartments. All your different uh, little bungee cord attachments. Here's even a saw. Woohoo! Oh, for cutting wood, whatever. Oh, or for defense, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get me a bear? I dare you. Bear fishing pole, yeah. So this is uh, makes sense because it's so light, the core plus. Yeah, and it's too. tough. You could sit on this thing. It'll hold your weight. Yeah. yeah. So what do you have there? You have a sleeping bag. I got a bigger tent, but it's just a little kid's it's tent. It's a tent also. Yes. So you are set with that. Pretty much, and then you know you could sh cram all your stuff in there. Still yeah. got all that, right? And zip ties again. Yeah, all zip ties. All That's all it is. Just zip ties. This is something that I made. It's a chair. Oh, wow. And these go in here. I was raised a Boy Scout, so. <laughs> trying to remember how to do this. So hopefully I get it right. And yeah, it's a chair. Super minimal chair. Super minimal, like a camping chair, yeah. Yeah, I fabricated the metal part. I wanted to get it to as small and light as possible. Yeah. I mean, that's probably the smallest chair I've ever seen. <laughs> that's light. Wow. A pound, and maybe. So during COVID, we wanted to go camping, but we kind of feared using restrooms. So we made our own bathroom. I made this bucket. So I just welded on some little blocks. This came from some stairs cutouts and that way you don't tip over when you're leaning over to wipe yourself <laughs> yeah real simple it works right it works it does yeah. i was going to show you another yeah. odd thing that i made during covid heated the middle of the cartridge up over a candle once again and bent it so yeah, COVID came and everybody was running out of toilet paper, remember? There was shortage after shortage. So this is my little, <laughs> you know, idea for B-Days, right? Are those straws? 
Yeah, one's a pen. This is a pen and a cork, a, a wine cork with tape. And this is a from a pen cartridge. Because you just need to curve. <laughs> yeah, <Yep>. that's it. <laughs> COVID time came around, and my wife is a school teacher. One thing she was having a problem with was doing Zoom meetings, right? Oftentimes, you know, if you see somebody Zooming, they're like, you're looking. <laughs> <laughs> so I made some stands for her. It's amazing, Coroplast, you know. I had to custom make the notch for her particular computer. And this is just little string, little tape, you know. <laughs> it's such little, so minimal material. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. That's all you need sometimes, right? That's all you need, yeah. And that's just, okay, there it is. Now you're done. <laughs> So stoves, I did a few stoves here recently. So there's one that I played with, little rocket stove. This thing breaks down, it's in there. Yeah, I just wanted to make something real compact that you could basically take camping with you. I tried making uh, smaller versions than this, but the fire didn't want to go. So I had to go bigger and bigger. That's the minimum you can, Throw a few sticks in there down the thing, and it just, you know, the heat kind of comes up and keeps it going. And For just a little bit of heat. Just a little bit of heat, okay. cook a little meal. I can cook? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is one I made years ago. It's an old ammo box, right? This burned for like a half hour. It wasn't too bad. Then I had a little s scraper, ash scraper, and and now for something totally different. <laughs> it is if you don't have a set of golf clubs and you want to go golfing, strap this to your shoe and you just kick ah, the golf ball. Ah, you got me there. I, I've kicked it like 150 feet. <laughs> it's just fun. That's all you need. Don't need to buy clubs or anything. Just. Do you remember that one? Yeah, I do. I remember this wheel. <laughs> Should we try yeah. one? You feel it safe? Yeah. No. One. But I'll do it just for you, Kirsten. <laughs> oh, See if I remember how to do this. Oh gosh, it has a seatbelt. Yeah, if you don't use the seatbelt, you'll hit your head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you sure about this? No. <laughs> Here we go. That's all I'm going to do. It works. It no. works. <laughs> it does. I did 14 revolutions consecutively when I got 14. good at this. 14. <laughs> you're all over the place. In the end, you're just laughing your ass off. It's a lot of fun. <laughs>